Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, visiting East Coast Honda, and I'm checking out a 2023 Honda Pilot all-wheel drive in the EXL trim level. This vehicle is sitting on 255-60 Goodyear tires wrapped around 18-inch alloy wheels with a gloss silver finish. It also has four-wheel disc brakes. The name of this color is Radiant Red Metallic. And the sun is shining right now, so we get a hopefully get an idea of what it looks like here. Little sparkles there, and it's just a nice overall color. So here in the front, uh, this is all a matte black grill. So this is all matte black here, as well as down here. There's a, a like a silver strip there at the bottom. The badge is seems like it's getting bigger every year, uh, but this one is a. Uh, also serves as the radar adaptive cruise control sensor behind that as well. Parking sensors are integrated into this uh, black portion here in the grill, here and there. Now there's also a uh, little bit of airflow that goes through here, uh, allowing the air to flow around the vehicle. The headlights are a multi-reflector system with the low and the high beams uh, working together. And then it has the LED daytime warning light and turn signals here in the front. And the fog lights are a, an LED projector, very low position as well, which is excellent. Here's the profile, and you'll notice that it has the same black plastic from the front continuing around each wheel well and at the base of the door, and it continues on even to the back of the vehicle. Now the doors go all the way down to the bottom of the vehicle, and I'll show you why they do that in a few minutes. Now, right above uh, that black portion is this little metallic strip there. There's also a chrome strip that underlines the glass. And then the pillars, uh, this one is a, uh, a matte black. And then this pillar is actually body colored, kind of flows through there, kind of separating the third row of seat. Now, it's a pretty wide uh, pillar right there, and it's kind of together with that one. Uh, and we'll see what the visibility looks like from the inside. It has body colored handles and the upper portion of the side mirror as well. This is what the key looks like and it's a full proximity key system. And this is the relatively new Honda key. Rounded, fairly lightweight. And it has the, uh, the lock, the unlock buttons, remote start, and the ability to open up the power lift gate as well as a panic button. So as long as you have this key with you, you can approach the vehicle it could, the key could be in your pocket in a bag as long as it's outside of the either the driver or passenger front doors uh, there's a little sensor right here to lock the doors so you place your finger over that sensor to lock the doors to unlock it you simply put your hand behind the handle here right in here it senses your hand it also senses the key on the outside of the door and allows you access to the vehicle now there's also a physical key location here if you pull open the handle it's right under there and there's a physical key on the inside of the key fob it slides out the end and it allows you to open the door just in case you need that it's like a backup now i mentioned that the doors go all the way to the bottom of the vehicle and this is why you can see it has a seal right in here and this area this whole threshold area uh, is covered up by the door and even the seal there to keep the as much dirt as possible anyway out of this area so you're not uh, you know getting your clothes dirty or whatever getting in and out it's just like a little bit of a courtesy feature here's the inside of the passenger door now it has like a injection molded type soft material here at the top you notice it's mostly black door uh, there's a gloss black here and then stitching here and then the handle is metallic uh, but almost like the entire door is all black uh, so this is a kind of a semi-soft material here, here, this is more soft, your armrest. And it's kind of like a vinyl type material here. Uh, this is more of an injection molded type material. This pocket right here, this handle is enclosed, so you can utilize it as a pocket. It does have a hard surface at the bottom, hard uh, touch plastic. Same thing with there. Uh, but I love the way the, the doors are designed. Worth You have these forward pockets so right here as well as the cup holders and also you have the larger one there but it's right where your hand is uh, so some vehicles they have the the pockets in the back or something where your elbow is so this is just a much more ergonomically you know ideal spot to put the 
um, the, the pockets on the door. Uh, there's also, this right here extends in a little bit. So if you had a small umbrella, you can put it right there. Uh, so it's just a little bit of extra, that more than what you're seeing right in there as far as space. So there is a power seat, but it does not go up and down. It, you can see it just goes forward and back here and then tilt. So it's a little bit less uh, as far as functionality than the driver's seat. So here's the leather seats and it has the contrast stitching as like what we saw on the door. Uh, there's a little bit of a cloth pattern there in the center part. A uh, little really nice leather texturing here in the center part, which is nice. And it's more smooth there on the ends, uh, on, on the edges there. A little bit of contoured seat and then a little bit of bolstering, but nothing too intrusive. And then we have more of that, like a microfiber type cloth strip right there. And pretty comfortable seats. Uh, so far as just sitting in it, it has been very comfortable. Lots of rank leg room here in the front. Very little tapering or anything, uh, except for right in there. Uh, but overall, lots of room. This is all hard touch surfaces here. Lockable glove compartment. It has like a soft opening and a smooth plastic on the inside as well. Kind of traditional size. So we have more of that kind of vinyl type material here with the French stitching, double stitched here. Has this really handy uh, quick access like storage shelf right in here with a rubber bottom, which is really nice. Uh, it's one of those things where it, you can secure some stuff in there so it's out of the way, but it's still visible. So when you put stuff in a glove compartment, it's easy to forget about it. So this is a way of just quickly just setting something down, but you you know you still need to get at it or whatever, have access, ac access to it quickly, and it just kind of reminds you to get it. So really nice little spot to put stuff. And it's just easy to get to and all that stuff. Uh, and then you have this metallic strip right here, and then a soft touch, kind of rubbery soft, non-reflective, uh, synthetic type, injection molded type material dash. There is some more uh, gloss black right here as well. The front door, uh, the amount of space you have to get in and out is fantastic. Uh, the height off the ground to the seat is great. It's really easy for me to get in and out of this type of vehicle. And then the just the opening is nice. You're not bumping your head or anything like that. The swing of the door is nice. Now the back door is uh, very similar in that the swing of the door is okay. It could be slightly more, but it's okay considering how much room you have here. Uh, there's the only thing different is this area right here is a little bit smaller uh, But as far as like this area, you're not bumping your head. It's you know, it's It's a little bit of a trade-off because right here you actually have a, a, a slant This one is just straight up the slant is on this side. So it's actually for me It's seems a little bit easier and to some degree getting into the back door uh, So swing of the door is nice and all that stuff and the door goes all the way down to the bottom just like the front there is a retractable shade, shade as well, in addition to the privacy glass. Uh, you can have that and it retracts into the door when you're not using it. And the privacy glass is quite substantial, it's nice and dark. Now the inside of the back door, very similar uh, as far as materials and stuff. Uh, but we have the hard touch here instead of the soft touch. And then we have soft touch here and here only, here on the armrest and then around the door. Uh, this is enclosed and then you have the pockets in the more forward position and then the one at the bottom and remember this is all hard touch here at the bottom there's the threshold area and it kind of has like some hard surfaces here for stepping in and out since we're uh, potentially going into the third row seat sometimes so that kind of helps out and these are kind of like captain's chairs and you can see there's significantly less bolstering on these seats kind of more flat uh, but they have the same styling, the same stitching, and all that stuff. And they do have armrests uh, there in the center that you can lift up out of the way when you're not using them. The back of the front seats have this pretty handy pocket. And it's really big and soft on the inside. It's like a soft material. Also, this one right here, uh, it's like for a cell phone or remote control or something right there. Uh, which is nice. All soft inside as well. My, I have a big phone that fits in there, no problem with room to spare. The floor is completely flat. 
So that makes a big difference as far as leg room and, you know, kind of getting in, moving around, you know, kids running around, that kind of thing, getting situated. And it has this hard plastic center port, so you could put stuff in here, a bag, a box, whatever. Rear climate controls uh, are right here in the center, easy to get to by either one of the passengers back here. And uh, so it has temperature, fan speed, all that kind of stuff, and also USB charge ports as well. And climate control vents are here. Then you have some little reading lights and handles and stuff as well. Now these seats have two positions. They have the ability to move up out of the way. So there's a button here. So we got a button right there, but we also have a button on the back of the seat uh, for the third row passengers to use. You also have this lever. This lever, let's go ahead and show you that. So this folds the seat down to like a cargo position, right? Uh, this lifts up or you can move the seat forward if you're accessing the third row and that's what the buttons are for before i do that i'll show you the latch system for the car seat and you see how easy to get the, how easy they are to get to uh, there's no covers to lose or anything like that okay so the third row seats you just push the button right there there we go and it moves forward and kind of like spoons its way up to the front seat there and then this is the path that you take to get to the third row and you see the third row is kind of low to the floor but is not as bad as some vehicles but look how wide and open and big these third row seats are really nice and they're arguably potentially more comfortable than the second row seats because they're a little bit wider and give you a little bit more room uh, still no contouring like the front seats though there is cup holders, charge ports back here, USB. There's tie down uh, places for cargo when you're not utilizing these seats. There's a charge port over there, cup holders, climate control vents, that kind of stuff. There's also reading lights as well. Now you'll notice right here, there's only one place for a car seat and that's here on this side. The other side does not have the attachments for it. So you want to keep that in mind. And these seats fold down in a 60-40 split. So it's on the smaller section uh, that utilizes the car seat. So you can fold the other side down and add to your cargo space if you happen to have a car seat here, which is really nice. We'll look at that in a minute as far as folding the seats down. Taking a look at the back of the vehicle, it has a body colored shark fin antenna here at the very top center. Third brake light is at the top of the glass in this uh, rear spoiler. There's also a rear wiper. And the pilot name is here across the back, and in this case, it's just black, so it's not as hard, easy to see. The backup camera is quite a bit offset over here, kind of tacked on. I think they could have done a better job with that. Parking sensors across the back, and just like the front, they're integrated in this black portion. And then, just like the front, we have a silver portion at the bottom. So opening up the power lift gate, you can of course use the key or you can push the button under here. There's different ways you can open it up. If you have all the seats occupied with passengers, uh, this will be your cargo space. Uh, now you notice that the seats, the third row seats are reclinable. You can see one seat's a little bit further than the other one. Uh, same thing with the second row. So there's a subwoofer back here, little storage pocket right here. Kind of like put some an umbrella or whatever there. It keeps it from rolling around. Here on the left side, 12 volt power supply. And then a little cubby right here, which is removable. You take this cubby out and then under that is the tools for the spare tire. The spare tire is located under the vehicle. All right, so if, there's also additional space under here. So this lifts up. And this is this has a little a little latch on it, which is nice. Uh, you can see it's a a reversible cover, so you can see the latches on that side or this side. So you can have the hard plastic up, or you can have the carpet up, depending on your needs. Uh, and this is completely removable as well. You know, you just take it right out, and you can utilize all the height and all the extra space here if you want to do it. Or you can put a bunch of junk in here and cover it up, <laughs> out of sight, that kind of thing. 
You notice it has this little cover that says spare tire. That's You take that cover off and there's a bolt which helps you lower the spare tire to the ground. There's also dividers that you can get to put in here. Uh, there's different things you can um, add to the vehicle as far as like accessories and stuff. That's the way all of the Hondas are. There's always a whole bunch of accessories that they that they have available. Okay, so folding these seats down. Remember I mentioned that you could have a car seat in that one. Let's just pretend there's a car seat there. And let's go ahead and lower this seat. Like so. And now we've added to the cargo space. Before we were kind of limited, didn't have a whole lot here. Uh, but considering the seats fold down separately, we can add to the cargo space. And you notice I have that seat down now. So we can actually put a really long box in here, potentially, and still maintain passenger space over there. Or vice versa, we could do the other side, depending on our needs. Uh, so, you know, all that versatility is great uh, when you're, you know, trying to big up, pick up a big box or whatever. Um, or haul some passengers and still need to pick up the box, that kind of thing. Or you could fold down everything and have a really wide open space back here. Lowering the power lift gate, there's a button right here. And you just press it and it'll come down for you. The fuel door is here on the driver's side and it's a locking fuel door and it locks with the vehicle. So when the vehicle's locked, it's locked. When we unlock the doors, it also unlocks the, 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 the fuel door. So it has a capless design and basically you don't have to use a, uh, you don't have to take the cap off. You don't have to worry about putting the cap back on or getting your hands dirty. Simply put the nozzle in there, pump the gas and you're good to go. As long as the key's inside the vehicle uh, to start it up, you just hold the brake and push this button right here to start it up. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Now you notice that unlike the passenger side, this side hooks, uh, the floor mat hooks in place in two places. The, driver, the passenger side only had one spot. Uh, it's important to keep the driver mat not only from sliding this way, but also twisting and getting out of the way of the pedals. So there's the accelerator, brake pedal, and a large comfortable footrest there on the left side, which is a must for me anyway. So let's take a look under the hood. The hood latch is right in here, here at the bottom. To open the hood, there's a latch way over here to the right. You actually see it, it's, it's yellow, so it's nice, and it's kind of rubbery to the touch. So it's right in here, kind of above, uh, above right in this area. You just reach in and you move it to the right to release the hood. And you, you have to lift the hood up. There's no assistance or anything like that. And it does require a prop. It does require this prop to hold it up. And it swings up. There's actually two places. So the first one is here uh, where the arrow is pointing. Or the secret position that I like to use is this other position, which raises the hood much higher down here. This is the secret one that mechanics use. It gets the hood nice and high up and out of your way so you're not bumping your head on it. Uh, the sun and the, the light can shine in there. Uh, it's almost as good as taking the hood completely off, which is <laughs> something that's not fun to do, but it required a lot of times if you don't have this feature. Okay, so we have a V6 engine and it's oriented this way. So even though it's an all-wheel drive vehicle, it's oriented like it's a front-wheel drive vehicle. So the primary uh, power goes to the front wheels. There is a little tiny bit of insulation there on the firewall. Not a whole lot of shielding as far as heat anyway, but there is a lot of space under here. The battery is located down in here. You can see it down there. Relatively easy to get to. You might take this off depending on your needs. And it's got a, the engine completely covered up with this plastic, which is interesting. It's kind of a new cover that hadn't seen before on Hondas. Uh, typically that's more of a plastic shell that kind of snaps in place. This is more like a hard, you know, more robust piece that they're putting here. But you can see some of the features of the engine. It's not completely covering everything up. You see some uh, so injectors and 
some of the wires for the coil packs, that kind of stuff. Powering this vehicle is a 3.5 liter V6 engine uh, with 285 horsepower. Now it has variable cylinder management, VCM, which is a ability to deactivate certain cylinders to when it's not need, when not all six cylinders are needed to save on fuel a little bit. Now it's paired to a 10 speed uh, automatic transmission and it is the all wheel drive system. It's the IVT M4 all wheel drive system with the different drive modes uh, that are software operated. The blind spot detection system and rear cross traffic alert indicator is here on the side mirror. So it'll illuminate when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. Here's the inside of the driver's side doors, just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. There's two presets for the power seat for the driver. The windows are one touch up and down. Nice and smooth. The rear glass goes down all the way. And it is one touch in the back as well. Door lock controls there, side mirrors are adjusted here. And then you have the same styling as the other side. Now the driver's seat, of course, one-ups the passenger because this has the ability to raise the seat, lower the seat, tilt, all that, and a two-way lumbar adjustments as well. So it's a lot more uh, movement and adjustments there than the passenger side. And like I said, these seats are very comfortable for me, so hopefully they'll be comfortable for most people. So right in here, uh, there is the ability to open up the power lift gate, turn off the traction control, default is on, you turn, use that button to uh, turn it off, and then there's a blank button there for other stuff, and then has a tilt and a telescoping steering column that you lock in place. And the lock is relatively easy to find. It's right there, easy to get to. I'm sitting in the driver's seat. I'm six feet tall, and I have the seat all the way down and all the way back, just to give you an idea of the potential legroom here. So it's a little bit too far back for me to drive safely uh, with it all the way back. I would have to pull it up just a little bit more. So if you're a little bit over six feet tall, you should have no problem. There's plenty of legroom, lots of room here on the sides of my knees here. Uh, even this is not really an issue. Um, so, so yeah, lots of legroom here. So it has a leather wrap steering wheel and the steering wheel is pretty good thickness. It feels nice. It's more smooth uh, on the smoother end, but it's not slippery. So overall it's pretty good. It could be a little bit softer. It's a little bit hard, but, uh, but overall good. And the fact that it's thick is good and that way it's not digging into your hands when you're gripping it. It is a little bit soft. It has a little bit of places where it's softer than others. Had the grips there at the top, and then the gloss black portions, Honda emblem there, and the metallic portion at the bottom. Really nice looking, actually. It does have the paddle shifters on the back for that 10-speed automatic transmission. Uh, so this will be handy for down uh, shifting and stuff like that. Going down hills, you need some engine braking. Uh, that would help out. Now the cruise control is here on the right side and it has the adaptive cruise control system. So once you turn it on, you can set, resume, and cancel here. And then it has the ability to set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you uh, with the radar system and then the lane keep, uh, lane keep assist system, you can turn that on, on and off here independently. On the left side, uh, it has the volume for the radio, change to the tracks on the radio, uh, and then a voice recognition here. Now this little scroll wheel has the ability to press in on it and scroll and it's rubberized so it's nice and grippy. Uh, and that corresponds with the screen here on the gauges. We'll get to that in just a minute. The windshield wiper controls for the front and rear is uh, located here. And basically, the, you know, like a separate control there. And then uh, here on the left side is the turn signal, but it also has the headlight switch as well. So it has off, which you can toggle on, on or off the daytime running lights, uh, and then you have parking lights and then headlights there. And then the fog lights are controlled separately here. Here's the gauges. You notice these little white lines right here. Uh, those will uh, turn green as you're driving, you know, in a economical way, and then they'll kind of turn white as you're like flooring it and going faster. So since I'm sitting here idling, it's not very economic 
uh, so they're white. <laughs> uh, but it does look nice with the, the white lettering, the black background, and digital speedometer there in the center. Uh, so very traditional, easy to read, easy to understand. Uh, gauge cluster here, it's not you know complex or weird or wonky or anything. Uh, so as the regular speedometer here on the right side, the tachometer or RPM gauge here on the left side. Now these are digitally uh, represented uh, on the left side right here. On the right side is an actual real gauge. Uh, there's actually a real needle there. Uh, but on the left side, it, this is like a screen. I don't know if you can see that kind of separated uh, from the right side. Uh, so that's where you get the digital speedometer and the uh, fuel gauge is located there. And the fuel gauge located right there is when you're driving, sometimes it gets obscured by the steering wheel. Uh, but so I'm not sure, you know, it'd be nicer if it was like higher position or something. Uh, outside temperature and uh, so right here, you'll notice since this is digitally represented, you can get more information there. So remember this little scroll wheel and this home button. When you hit the home button, and you can utilize that scroll wheel. So it pops up and it gives you options. Right now, I have no content, but we can go through, change the brightness, which is handy. Uh, but we can go through here and change uh, information here. So we can choose what we want to have as options and some of them are grayed out because they're kind of required and it does scroll back to the top. Um, but let's go here. So let's, all of them are checked, which is nice, uh, but you can go through and, and select the one you want. So range and fuel is nice. Uh, speed and time, so this would be uh, elapsed time and the average speed. Whatever your radio is doing. It has like a little picture and all that stuff, which is nice. Uh, whatever your phone's doing, there's no phone paired. This is good for like, you know, caller ID if you're expecting a call, that kind of thing. Navigation just shows the uh, the digital compass. Uh, driver attention, this will let you know if it's if you're driving kind of like lazily or something is what it's supposed to do and let you know that you need a break. Uh, I haven't really experienced anything positive out of that. All-wheel drive torque distribution, this is pretty cool. As you're driving, these little bars right here will let you know where the actual power is going. So if it's more to the front, more to the back, you know, that kind of thing, depending on your situation. This is mostly useful in a slippery roads or off-road, more off-road type stuff, uh, but it is kind of neat to look at. Uh, the status of the seat belts, it'll show you that there's somebody sitting in the driver's side and they don't have their seat belt on. Um, but once people sit in there, it'll turn green once they put their seat belt on. Uh, maintenance, I'll just show you the oil life here. Tire pressure, it shows you the actual tire pressure on each, each wheel, which is great. Uh, safety support, so this will show you the status of the blind spot detection, the lane departure warning, the adaptive cruise control, and all that stuff. Uh, the, the, that it's actually turned on and green and active. Uh, or you can have no content here like I had originally. So that's kind of a quick rundown of what the gauge is about. It has additional information there that you can customize. Uh, but overall, it's relatively simple and easy to use and easy to see, which is very important for me anyway. Uh, it's not overly complicated and things are in a, in a logical place. We saw the start button before. So here's the touch screen. It does have a physical volume knob here and some buttons here on the side. Uh, so these, this button is actually a physical button you press in. Some, some vehicles have like a, a soft touch buttons on the side. This one is a physical one, physical volume knob, and physical uh, tuning knob as well. Or not a knob, but buttons there. Uh, so we can go in. I like the colors. It's kind of like your cell phone. It has different options here. You can slide through, adjust the display. Uh, you can go to different apps here as well. And you can choose the ones that you want. You can kind of narrow it down so it's not so cluttered. Fun. Let's go to the satellite radio. So you can see that it has the uh, the presets there at the bottom. You can slide through them, add them, subtract them, that kind of thing. And then you have some quick access stuff down here uh, that you can go into uh, to your cell phone, Bluetooth audio, uh, FM radio, and then you can adjust the display uh, to not day or night mode, which is handy. All right, you do have the trip computer here on the screen. You have a current drive, trip A and trip B. And don't trust any of these numbers. This vehicle hasn't even been on the road yet. Uh, actually, it probably has, but not very much. 
All right, um, and then let's go to, you can play off the USB, uh, and then the smartphone connection that has the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto capabilities. Uh, you'd have different settings in here. You can have a clock. Sometimes time is of the essence, and this is customizable as well, so it's nice to have just a big clock. It does have the, uh, the regular digital clock there, but just having this, sometimes, you know, you just want to focus on that and not be distracted. Uh, it does have the Honda Link, um, that you, you know, it's an app for your cell phone and, you know, it can be useful depending on the situation. It has a compass, uh, and then you have the different shortcuts here. Let's get out of that. That's the smart shortcuts. All right. And cabin talk, which is pretty cool. So you talk up here and it, it projects your voice to the speakers in the back. So when you turn it on, you're talking to people in the far back without hollering at them, which is really nice. All right, so, you know, let's just kind of look at the settings. You got general settings there. And then you got the vehicle settings. So you can set up the vehicle. So that's kind of a quick rundown of the screen and the basic functions and how to get to different things. Um, you know, it's just like the other Honda, current Honda vehicles on the market, uh, you know, that has it doesn't have like onboard navigation, that kind of stuff. You know, it, it's through your cell phone a lot, uh, like so with the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, that kind of stuff. So there is some limitations, but there's also benefits in that too. You're not paying additional money for a navigation system uh, in this case because it's you know your, your phone. If you already has that, then you can uh, use it that way, and you can have it on the screen. You know, still utilizing the screen to do what you want to do. Four-way flashers are there, and then the climate control is here, and it's a tri-zone, driver, passenger temperatures, and then the rear, which you control here or in the back. You can also lock the rear so you don't have kids playing around with it. Uh, but you notice it's very simple, you know, temperatures, fan speed, uh, where you want the air to blow. It's just a, it's just a straightforward thing. You can sync everything if you want. Uh, that's where you want the air to blow, front and rear defrosters. When you turn on the rear defrosters, it also turns on the heated side mirrors as well. You have heated seats, three stage for the driver and passenger here. It's a little storage uh, compartment right there and um, it's not big enough for really a cell phone or anything, but it uh, could be handy for some things. And then there's a USB and a USB-C uh, ports here for the system as well as charging. And then this is for the charging and this is for the system. So you can see this is the uh, connection. This is just for charging. Uh, 12 volt power supply here. Wireless charger. And then the, uh, just a nice big open area to put stuff. And this is rubberized here at the bottom. And it's nice and grippy. This area is nice. And I like the fact that it's wide open. And speaking of that, uh, here's the shifter. We'll get to that in a minute, but I just want to point out that accessing this pocket is a lot easier when there's no shifter st sticking up at, in your way. And so the push button shifter is really good when you get used to it. It's very annoying at first if you don't, if you're not accustomed to it, it's just like weird, but it's really handy and it's, it's logical because it just kind of gets all that stuff out of your way. Uh, so there's the cup holders and it has little articulating arms. I wish my ridge line had those. And right here is the electronic parking breaker uh, brake and then the brake hold feature, which will hold the brakes when you come to a complete stop. And then the drive modes, which when you when you move this, it kind of pops up here on the screen. So you have the eco, snow, trail. And it's pretty cool. It has these little icons. So you can see like the, uh, the econ there. Let's go to snow. It has like a picture of that. Trail sand towing mode you just basically when you add it when you're towing normal and then sport so we'll just uh, leave it on normal so that's the drive mode as you can see which one you're in uh, it has the idle stop and uh, you can turn that feature off if you don't like it and me personally I turn it off when I get in the vehicle and this is a down hill descent. Uh, this is more on a slippery surface and you're trying to go downhill without 
you know, going too fast and sliding. So it's like a slow off-road type or slippery surface type cruise control for slow. This is up and that downhill. It's, it's 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 a hill descent, whether it be up or down. Okay, so there's the shifter, um, and it's just basically you push the button for park, you push the button for drive. So now we're in drive. Press it again uh, for standard mode, and then you can use the paddle shifters. And then press it again to go back to drive. And you know what gear you're in because it'll show right here. So we press it. And we press the neutral button that says neutral. Even gives you a warning there. And then a reverse. When you pull in on this, you pull back on that one. So it's not as easy to press to go in reverse. Uh, so it's kind of like a different button because the reverse is a different deal. And it'll pop up here the parking sensors. It kind of give you a visual aid there for the parking sensors, but also the backup camera pops up. And you'll notice that it has these three different views. And the first one, this is really handy once you get a, when you understand what you're looking at, because it's very stretched out. Um, but it's designed, this whole camera system could be better, I'm, I'm not going to lie, as far as the placement of the camera itself. Um, it could be in the center and a higher position and all that stuff. But as it is, this is very useful because you get a wide view and what you're looking at, that bumper is straight in real life, obviously. But when you're looking at it on this, it's straight here, but then it curves up. And basically what you're doing is it's like you're getting an eyeball view down that way and that way. So if you're backing out of a parking spot and, you, you know, let's say you don't have the rear crash traffic alert on, and you're backing out, you can see what's coming from either way because it actually gives you that view, really sharp views there, uh, this view, in addition to what's behind you. So it gives you from the bumper to the sky and all the way, like the full view. Uh, so it takes a little getting used to if you're not accustomed to the super wide view, but it does help out a lot. If you want a, a more linear view, you can get to this one but you're missing out on the side views. And you're, not look, you're not seeing to the sides. You don't see if there's anybody walking or driving towards you as you're backing up. And then it does have uh, the active guidelines. So as I turn the steering wheel, you can see the little lines moving. Kind of give you an estimated trajectory of the vehicle as you're backing up. And then this button is just for like top down for backing up to a trailer hitch, that kind of thing. We can turn on or off the uh, rear cross traffic alert blind spot detection system quickly as well. And we're done. And we just go to park. So it's, 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 it's simple. Here's the armrest. Uh, soft, kind of rubbery soft, but it is soft. It doesn't bottom out quickly. So it's, it's pretty good. And nice and big. You might be able to share that with the passenger. I don't know. Depending on how generous you are and how nice they are, I guess. Now you can lift this up, and it's kind of spring-loaded, so it's not going to slap back down on you. you. Lift it up like so. And here's the compartment here in the center. And relatively simple. I mean, it has like this little quick access here. Uh, this is rubberized. And then this rubber floor here does give you the ability to take it out and put it back in to clean it. So that's it right there. No surprises on the bottom. Some some vehicles have like little pictures and stuff on the bottom, but this one doesn't have it. And there's no like obvious place for wires to go in and out. I mean, there's no uh, place to charge or anything like that. There's no ports or anything, so I guess that's the reason why. Keeping it simple. So it has a uh, auto dim rear view mirror, and you can turn that feature on or off right here. There's home link, home link garage door opener controls right here as well. Above that is the interior lights. So you have quick reading lights for the driver and passenger. You also have like these little uh, ambient lights right here that kind of illuminate this area at nighttime. I hadn't seen this vehicle at night, but uh, that's what they're for. And I'm assuming that would help out a lot. Interior lights all on, all off, or uh, with the door. When you open the door in that center position, they'll turn on the interior lights. There's a conversation mirror right there, in addition to the place to put your shades, which is right in here. And it's like a rubbery uh, foam type material in there. 
The visors are a cloth material, like a like a, a beige or gray looking cloth, and then it's the same, basically the same thing as the headliner. There's a mirror for the light. Uh, these also extend out. There's a clip on this side. Good place to put a registration or something. Basically, same thing on the other side. Looking at the, vis at the visibility back there, um, I have one side of the seats down with some cargo, and I have one side up. So you can see the difference that the headrests make in the visibility, actually looking out of the vehicle. Um, so you can see the, the pillars are an issue as far as visibility. And then you have the headrests and just the location of the windows. Um, so it's not, it's not really a big deal. I mean, the headrests do kind of block that window back there. Uh, but when you consider it has the camera system, the rear cross traffic alert, blind spot, de blind spot detection system, the parking sensors, you know, you have a lot of technology in addition to just looking out the window. So that helps out a lot. Um, I wonder if they will in the future have a rear view camera system uh, instead of just the, 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 the mirror there. Uh, so that would kind of help out too, especially if you got a lot of passengers back there, just give you a better view uh, behind the vehicle while you're driving anyways. Okay, so thank you for watching. Thank you to East Coast Honda here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Great dealership. I'll leave their contact information in the description. They provided the vehicle today. Thank you again for watching. I'll see you guys next time.